Welcome back, 7 Days to Die modding fans. This is Zith, and today we're going to cover Chapter 3 of the tutorial series on using the SDX tool to modify the 7 Days to Die game. This section it will cover the beginner's um, tutorial, and if you're following along on our website, we're here in the list under SDX Beginning Tutorial. Uh, in the previous chapter, we, we created a working directory and copied a clean copy of the vanilla game into that folder. So that is the copy that we're going to be modifying today. So let's click down Building for the First Time. Uh, we have in front of us a copy of the 7 Days Die um, Launcher tool that you saw in the last episode. I'm going to go ahead and open up my copy uh, of that tool. Bring it here up on the screen. And it will look just like that. Now you notice both boxes are unchecked. You can check these mods, like I said, when you want to load in a particular mod, it must be checked. But for this first build, we want to make sure both of these boxes are unchecked. You want to make your very first SDX run with nothing selected. This run is going to create the backup folders for you and pretty much uh, copy all the files in that's going to need for future builds. So we're going to uncheck these box. Remember, the um, settings is, is pathed out to the working folder. That is the version of 7 Days to Die that we're going to modify and play. So we check that that's still correct. Nothing's changed there. We'll uncheck both these boxes and we're going to go ahead and press build. It automatically switches us over to the output tab, which is our log file. It'll run for about 7-8 seconds, in this case 6.38 seconds, and it completes. So let's scroll up real quick and see what happened. Uh, without going too much in here, again, you have certain events that started. This is the process starting. We have information about what it's doing behind the scenes. We have a warning here, which you will always get, which just simply means it can't patch the type ragdoll asset, which we're not concerned about anyway. So just uh, when you see that, no worries. It patches 113 hooks into the game. That's basically giving us the ability to modify the base DLL of the game. And so it completes that task. Then it goes ahead and notes that there's no backup file created yet, first run. So it makes the backup file and copies some files into it um, for you know, us to use um, in the modding process. So it, it then finds all of those um, files, such as biomes, blocks, buffs, and so on, those XML files in your vanilla game that we put in the working directory, copies those into the backup. And then it goes down and finds the user interface and makes those copies. And then it saves out a copy of all of those files, the biomes and so on, the XML files, um, out into the working directory, game working data config. So you now have the uh, completely populated backup folder. Your working directory is all uh, set up. And it simply saves out the localization files and completes the process. So. This only happens that's on this first run, all of this. Um, it makes that backup folder, populates it for you, and so we're, that is complete. So if we were to click on the play button right now, seven days to die would launch, but it would look just like vanilla because we haven't done any modifications. We have not, we have not checked any of the boxes for these two mods there. And but we'll want to go ahead and do that in this next section here. So moving over to the, back to the website, the next thing is the cube mod. And remember in the first episode of the Unity tutorials, we made a simple cube and exported it as a Unity 3D file. And so now let's go ahead and take that um, outputted object, the cube, and let's get it into this working copy of Seven Days to Die. So clicking on the building the cube model, we're back here again with the cube sample and the katana sample. We're only going to be concerned right now with the cube, so let's check that one, make sure the katana is unchecked. Scrolling down, um, we want to go, all we have to do at this point to get there is to click build. Let me slide this over so you can see it. We'll go ahead now and click build. Pretty much going to look exactly like it did before. Copying is going to be the same and so on, but down the bottom, um, we're going to go ahead and notice a little bit different here in this section here, you notice it found the block sample mod and it applied that patch to um, the game uh, from the cube test XML. It modified the blocks file and the recipe file and noted that the highest block in the 
existing block file was block 2042, so it auto-assigned it the next highest block number, which is 2043. Please note that that is how this works right now. It may change in a future version, but it looks for the highest block ID, unused, uh, the highest used block ID, and assigns the next unused one after that. And it saves all of that um, changes out to your working copy the, of the game directory, and uh, copies out the localization if any changes have been there, and you're done. So now, if I go ahead and click play, it will start up seven days to die. And I'll pause right here until that uh, completes, and then we'll look in game. Okay, so uh, we're back. Skipped all the loading process there, so now we're in the game. Um, I didn't start in creative mode, so I need to pretty quickly go in and type in CM for creative mode. And that'll allow me to then hit function six, or in this case, U, and look for cube, cube test. I'm gonna drag that down to my belt there. And we can go ahead now, and you see there's the block that we created in the first tutorial. A little different texture on it because uh, Sphere 2, when he put this together, he used uh, an earlier version of the demo, which uh, I put a brick texture on it, but instead of the uh, Hello World texture, but it's all the same. Same block, but just a slightly different texture. So again, you can now use that block to build walls and do whatever you want to do with it, just like any other block in the game. So let's go ahead and go back and see what we can do with the uh, next uh, part of the tutorial, which is to put a katana in, in the game. Okay, so here we are back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, leave seven days to die running and hope uh, I don't get killed in there while uh, I'm doing the rest of this video. So let's move on to the katana mod. The katana mod is very, very similar. Uh, the difference is, of course, we're creating an item instead of a block. Uh, so the config files is a little bit different, but you can again read about the differences in the sections down here uh, as it opposed to the cube mod, which has slightly different different files as well. Uh, it looks like Sphere 2 didn't go into full detail about that uh, part of it, but let's go ahead and build this mod. So we're going to go back to the tool itself. This time we're going to we're going to go back and take the block. We're going to leave the block in because we want the blocks to stay in the game. We're going to add the katana sample and press build. And as Ash, if you happen to be running a copy of Seven Days to Die, it's going to say, uh -uh, I need that DLL and it's in use. I can't change it when it's in use. So you want me to go ahead and shut down the game while I build? And the answer to that, of course, is give me the nod and I'll end it. And I'm nodding. There we go. Shuts down Seven Days to Die and it runs the patch scripts. So here we go. Basically the same thing, only difference you're going to notice in this is that it has done a couple of things. It's applied two patches, the block sample and the katana sample here. And it assigned a block ID to the cube as it did before, and it assigned an item ID to the katana. So basically we're done there. All we have to do now is hit the play button and 7 Days to Die should launch back up again. And there it is, and I'll pause it here while it loads. Okay, so we're back, and we're in the game uh, where we left off. This time we want to go ahead, and I need to repeat the process to create, put creative mode on. Again, if you want to start the uh, game in creative mode, you don't have to do this step. But then I can press U, and let's see if we can find the katana. And that is uh, Michonne's katana that we created. So I'm going to drag that down there. And notice, boom, I've got a katana. And it seems to work fine. And, oh, not so good for brute. But that's basically, now we have put that item in the game. Uh, and um, 
the config files that were imported into 7 days that I told all about how to make the recipe for it and we'll look at those files in another video but for now that's how you put a block into the game and how you put a item which in the katana is an item put that into the game and so I hope you um, learned a bit in this video and uh, we'll make some uh, intermediate videos uh, in a, a later time so we're back in the website right now and there's a couple more uh, items to cover in the end of this section after we have built the katana adding a recipe and adding the katana to the loot group um, the website does a very good job of covering this material in here where you can look at the actual katana XML that is in the katana sample config folder and you look down here uh, again sphere 2 does a very good job of explaining the contents of that XML file uh, we use a program called Notepad++ to edit the file. We highly recommend that you use that. Using the built-in Windows um, Notepad can have undesired, strange effects when you modify the file. So stay away from the built-in file editor in Windows and use something like Notepad++ or its equivalent that knows how to deal with XML. So this shows you how you add a recipe in there. And so it pops up in the window here. I'm not going to cover that in any detail because it's a bit technical. It's much easier to read it than to explain it. Uh, adding it to the loot group as well. Same go going in, but there's an XML. The XML file talks has a section in it for adding the item, appending it into the existing XML file as a uh, an item in the loot file. You see here, config file recipes, config file items. Those are the sections that get modified. And so when you go ahead and, and do this, oh, we notice that there's an an error here that's not a fatal error it's because some scripts don't exist that we don't need uh, I believe in the latest version that's been changed to orange um, and we'll be updating the website to reflect that because it's simply information and down here when you search for katana in the loot XML you can see that it has been added finally a couple of tips and tricks this is makes for a really good read that um, uh, you might want to take the time to do that and the you can actually use rather than a vanilla copy of seven days to die if you have a mod like val mod that you want to use as your base you can go ahead that use that you'd copy that into your working folder rather than the vanilla game and you could add additional items into the val mod um, to make your own sdx version of val mod so again you don't have to use vanilla um, it's a good place to start but if you want you have a favorite mod out there and you want to keep modifying it you can go ahead I would be a little careful of modifying SDX mods. Um, they already are complex and mod a, a bunch of things, so you have to make sure that your config files are not going to clash with theirs. Um, that will be covered in an advanced tutorial, but if you're modifying a non-SDX game, um, you'll be perfectly fine for starting to use that as a base. So this explains a little bit more about that import process. So again, I hope you've learned something. Uh, it's been fun making these for you guys, and uh, we'll be covering uh, the intermediate tutorial uh, in the next uh, video series.